The world's leading scientists in robotics have recently managed to create soft robots which can mimic both human and animal skin in addition to its revolutionary flexibility in movements compared to the old, metallic robots we all know. These scientists are now working on giving those robots the most advanced artificial intelligence models in the world today, so that they can act just like we would expect a wild animal or a pet to do so. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you which robotic animals were created, what purpose each of those new kinds of robots will fill in our society, and finally, what this will actually mean for all the animals we interact or don't interact with on a daily basis. Robotic animals are artificially intelligent devices designed to resemble animals, most commonly a cat or dog, although they may be any animal. There are a lot of robopets on the market right now, and they're being marketed to people as pets or companions. A special effort is being made to put caregivers' minds at ease by purchasing these robot pets for elderly persons to replace died or abandoned companion animals. However, there is a huge and as yet unexplored market for robot pets and other social robots to serve as service robots which is now being looked at by robotic researchers and several big companies which are trying to corner a clearly emerging market. Let us refer to them as Serve You Bots. These personal service robots are distinct from those designed to replace people in certain industrial and service industries. Serve You Bots are tiny, portable, and designed for personal use, similar to robot pets, and are utilizing many of the technologies already incorporated into social robots. These onboard sensors usually include cameras for observation, microphones for audio recording, temperature sensors, communication technology, and even self-driving cars that move about depending on programming rather than human input. ServeU bots are being designed to replace service animals, which are now reared and trained to help people move about and be independent. However, this is a costly endeavor. Many service animal organizations have breeding programs, training facilities, and large budgets that are subsidized by donors or charged back to governments, insurers, or families. The Canadian Guide Canines for the Blind trains around 23 dogs each year at a cost of more than $74,300 per dog. The groups that breed and train these canines do not consider them pets. They are service dogs, meaning they have been trained to help people. If their current placement ends due to the death of the person they were helping or for other reasons, they are generally returned to the organization for another placement. While all eyes were on NASA's Perseverance rover's spectacular fall last month, another team launched a robot into another strange environment, one closer to home, the deep water. The deep sea is the last unexplored habitat on Earth, with its towering undersea mountains, stunning geological features, and unusual species, many of which are yet unknown. It's hardly unexpected that the area is inaccessible. Any daring adventurer who ventures into ebony waters will be met by chilling temperatures and crushing pressure. Have you ever heard the sound of metal cracking under pressure? It's completely scary. Without protection, a robot's tiny electrical components have little chance. Nonetheless, life has found a way to flourish despite these adverse environments. Scientists are taking notice. A Chinese team developed a soft autonomous robot inspired by a deep sea fish that can endure the harsh conditions of the Mariana Trench's bottom. The body of the robot is shaped like a stingray, with two huge flapping fins and a tail that allows it to effortlessly move around the surrounding waters. Instead of a single brain, the robot's sensitive electronics are distributed throughout its silicon body, akin to the nervous system of worms. This design eliminates the need for bulky and cumbersome pressure-resistant casings. It isn't merely a theoretical discussion. The researchers put their robot to the test by sinking it to the bottom of the Mariana Trench, the ocean's lowest point. The robot flourished, fluttering around in its surroundings and maybe fascinating or perplexing natural aquatic creatures. The bot tests the limits of what is possible. The deep sea is a treasure trove of rare life, massive geological structures, and mineral riches. We may finally be able to explore unexplored ocean depths using a soft yet tough as nails robot. It is more difficult to navigate the Mariana Trench than it is to climb Mount Everest without oxygen. The Challenger Deep, at almost 35,000 feet below sea level, is the trench's lowest point. The pressure there is difficult to comprehend about a thousand times the average air pressure at sea level, or, to put it another way, an elephant standing on your thumb. 
Because of these insane demands, deep sea exploration equipment is usually rigorously enforced. Pressure vessels, which are generally composed of heavy and cumbersome metallic material, are required to enclose rigid robots and machinery. Navigating these depths becomes a game of catch-up, with the thickness and size of these cages having to scale up to deal with rising pressure. Even yet, the harsh conditions of the deep sea make structural collapse a foregone conclusion. Classic bots are basically stiff bots wearing heavy metal gloves by the time they reach the Challenger deep, clunky and unnatural. They are out of place in their surroundings, with their hefty arms and propellers that might harm any marine, coral, or other samples they collect. The team's efforts did not end with lab testing. They opted for the real thing, real-world field testing. They tested their bot in three distinct environments, about 230 feet in a lake, over 10,000 feet in the South China Sea, and lastly the Challenger Deep. The robot was permitted to swim freely in the first two trials, reaching a top speed of around 2 inches per second. For the Mariana Trench test, the bot was linked to a traditional underwater robot for assistance and photo opportunities while flapping its wings. The bot performed admirably under severe duress. What distinguishes it is its capacity to withstand crushing pressure. Instead of using solid metal guards, the researchers spread out the electrical components inside the silicon body, much like how the Haddle snailfish arranges its head. The snailfish's skull isn't entirely fused, giving it some malleability and allowing pressure on the skull to equalize with outside pressure. This radical departure from the norm, packing all electronics into a single brain, paid off. According to lab testing and simulations, a spread-out structure lowered pressure on any one contact between components, implying that the robot's brain operated more like a flexible slinky than a tightly connected nervous system. The bot has the potential to revolutionize how we study the deep sea, particularly its teeming, strange aquatic life. In comparison to typical metallic robotic grippers, the soft bot can handle living specimens softly without scaring or harming them. It opens the door for a new generation of deep sea explorers. There's a lot to work on. One thing stands out. Speed. Despite being self-powered and directed, the trench bot swims slower than previously reported underwater bots. It is more vulnerable, as it is readily carried away by underwater currents. In the future, it will also need cameras and sophisticated sensors to capture its surroundings. Nonetheless, the bot sets the groundwork for future generations of tenacious and dependable deep sea explorers. In the long run, swarms of trench bots might reveal the deep sea secrets while monitoring its health. Soft robots might safely traverse coral forests or underwater caverns, collecting specimens while causing no harm to the ecosystem. They may also be dispersed throughout the seafloor to detect pollution, microplastics, or changes in marine life. But, more importantly, we may soon be able to investigate the secrets hidden at the bottom of our huge seas, much like legions of Mars rovers. Who knows what we'll discover? So what is your opinion on the future of robotics becoming potentially becoming soft and enabling things like replacing animals in their fields of expertise? What about replacing social animals that humans currently form real connections with, such as dogs? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.